Welcome into training camp live. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. And we got a bit of a different view today, <laughs> and it is not a shabby one. We are here in the indoor facility because of the fact that the rain and the weather drove us inside yet again. This time we at least knew before practice started this is where we were going to be. There was still a bit of a mad scramble by all of our production department. We're going to have a nice close-up view. What's up, Donnie? How's it going? Yeah, yeah, they put us perilously close to the biggest guys so, Yeah, the Yeah, just stand right by the giant drill. people and have your back to them, right. and it's going to be just fine. So anybody at home, if we look like we're about to die, let us know. Yeah. Uh, but thanks to Brett Green, who is the video uh, guy for the football side, because a lot of our production people aren't allowed in here because of COVID thing, so he jumped into action we give him a producer credit for today getting this set up at the very last minute before practice this was a total team effort by everybody involved so thanks to all of our production crew for working very hard to still get us a show even though it was moved indoors at the last minute so as always we're going to be taking your facebook questions in the final segment so make sure you leave those underneath our live video on facebook and that's where you can get a chance to ask us some of those and of course right now we want to start with our Ticketmaster play of the day and this is such a fun one check this out we got a couple things here. We got a big throw and an interception by Ross Cockrell. And then, if that wasn't enough, let's do it again. Ross Cockrell, another one. And there even ended up being a third one that he had. Game ball to the Cockrell family. Yeah. 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 And I, I love that. That is so cool that Bruce did that. And for people who don't know, it's because his sister had qualified for the Olympic final in the 400 meter hurdles that morning. Oh, we got, we got Coach Bowles over here helping produce the show. I thought he was going to run show. the camera there for a yeah, second. Uh, so yeah, so Ross Cockrell and his sister, we had three interceptions in an NFL practice and we had qualifying for an Olympic final. Make sure you yeah. tune in to see how she does in that final. Yeah, that's like a dream come true for her. Ross called it the biggest race of her life, but now she's got an even bigger one because she's in the finals. And the whole team, or a lot of his teammates were watching it with him and the coaches and it was apparently a very raucous scene and everybody was cheering their butts off it was a very close finish at the end and so that was about half an hour before practice started there's no way that ross cockrell can top his sister winning an olympic semifinal 400 meter hurdles right but he tried he tried real hard he did the <laughs> Three best he possibly could under the that second one i was sitting in that end zone behind it when it happened and the the way he caught the ball on the run and then took it towards this sideline and about 95 yards down the field for a touchdown with one teammate trailing him totally looked like the Rondé Barber interception in the uh, NFC Championship game in, in Philadelphia. It totally made me think of it. Although I think it was maybe a little bit louder in here than it was in Veterans Stadium at that moment. Yes, yeah. But I loved the game ball to the whole family. That was such a fun thing. And you know, because Ross Cockrell had such a big day, we figured this would be a good time to talk about some of your cornerbacks. Yeah. This is a, this is a group that it was so interesting to watch the storylines about them before last season. And we were very thankful that they got that chip on their shoulder by people ranking them last in the league as one of the, the groups out there. And it definitely got them extra motivated. So this cornerback group, here's uh, the snap totals for the guys that, that played last year. Tell me what you notice about that and, and these guys that are returning. Well, the point here was to show you, you know, who played last year and who's back. And of those six guys who took any snaps at cornerback, uh, five of them are back and Ryan Smith only took two. So basically everybody that they used last year is back, which is important to the other corners, which we'll look at in a minute. But a couple of things to mention here, Ross Cockrell is back, but right now he's playing safety. Mm -hmm. So in terms of comp competing right now for the young guys, that's one less guy for them to compete with at corner at the moment to, to take snaps away from them. A couple other guys on there, Sean Murphy Bunting, uh, he, he revealed during this camp that he played through a lot of minor injuries last year, maybe not so minor, but things that slowed him down a little bit. And, and that's what uh, Coach Arian said, how can he be better? Stay away from those nagging injuries. And then Jamel Dean the other day was saying he needs to turn more of his PBUs into interceptions because apparently you don't get all pro honors for PBUs. <laughs> yes, that's so true. All right, well, so that's an interesting point of what Jamel thinks he needs to improve on. What are the different things that either this unit as a whole could maybe work on or each individual guy, the areas that you think they could still take that step forward? Because they are such a young group still. We've talked about all these other position groups, the fact that we've brought everybody back and a lot of them are these veteran guys who are like, you know, how much more are we going to ask of a Levante or a Mike Evans or somebody? But this is still a very young group. Well, you can always, always improve your communication. Obviously, that got better last year and they were the secondary was playing quite a bit better at the end, um, making more turnovers. That's what they want, more turnovers. But as Jamel Dean pointed out, it's accurate to say 
that the way they finished the season gave them a lot of confidence. It was something to build on going into this season. But then he said, but you know what? We haven't been with, with each other for months. It's been a long time, so we really kind of have to start over. We can't just walk in here and think that we're going to be right at that level again. So they're sort of, you know, rebuilding that camaraderie and that chemistry and that good communication right now. And then the idea of the <clears throat> cornerback hopefuls. We've basically talked about this with each position group, and again, because we are returning so many people, yeah. we're not necessarily having a discussion this year of who's going to win that starting job, but we're talking about these roster spots, the depth, the backups, so tell us about some of these guys. Well, here. at the bottom there, Chris Wilcox just got uh, taken off of the active PUP list, which is good. He didn't really, he, he, they eased him in. I don't think he even practiced yesterday, but he's eligible, and maybe we can find the cornerbacks at some point with that high camera and see if he's out there today. So he's just getting started. He's a little bit behind. But again, they really like his size and his speed. He could be an instant impact guy. Maybe he could be your one-for-one -one replacement for Ryan Smith. Um, you saw Nate Brooks at the top of the list. I've talked about that a little bit. Haven't heard much in the last few days, but a couple days ago, there was a lot of talk about how he was making plays all the time. And then of all of those guys, the one with the most experience is Antonio Hamilton. He actually played in the Super Bowl against us, played every game for Kansas City last year, mostly on special teams. But that's the important thing for these guys. That's what they need to do first and foremost is carve out a role in special teams. You know, we talked about how, how few areas there were for us to improve when you've won a Super Bowl, and if you're going to bring in a new player, having it be from the next best team <laughs> seems like a pretty wise decision there. There you go, yeah. Yeah, so if you had to bet, how many cornerbacks do you think we'll take, and what is it going to be that gets those last couple roster spots of those hopefuls? Will it be their cornerback ability? Will it be their special teams ability? What percent of each of those things? Well. Let me start by saying, have, have you ever heard me say anything about cornerback depth? You know, I think I think a few times I may have heard you mention something about you, like that you, that you have too much, right? That's yeah. It's you can you always have way too much. <laughs> right. No, it's really hard to to cultivate and keep cornerback depth in the NFL. To, they to find them first of all to keep them healthy throughout a full season, and you rarely make it through with three guys. I mean, we didn't last year. Her, I mean, uh, Ross Cockrell had to step in several times, as you saw on that one chart. There's Chris Wilcox right there. Doesn't have a helmet on, which may, leads me to believe he's still sort of easing into it and probably won't do a lot of drills today, but it's good to see him out here on the field moving around. Absolutely. Okay, well, we are going to check out our camp highlights from yesterday, so make sure you check those in. And again, this is your last chance to get some of those Facebook questions for us in. Leave that underneath our live video in the comment section. We'll get to those in the final segment, so let's check out the highlights from yesterday. Welcome back into Training Camp Live. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. And as always, we are going to bring you as many live look-ins to practice as we possibly can and uh, give you that overhead look here. And we definitely have a, a different view today that we, uh, we're right here in the middle of the indoor. We got everybody hanging out here with us, and uh, we, we got the nice view of the big men right here behind us. So I know that uh, you didn't quite get to finish that last thought before we had to, to cut to break. So go ahead and yeah, tell us what I you're was, doing with that. I was just setting it up again with how cornerback depth is hard to get, and I just don't think you're going to cut a corner that you think can play. 
So that will inform how many the Bucks keep. You know, if there's six guys and they think all of them can play in the NFL in the regular season, they're going to keep them. They're going to find a way. Now, you know, if, if he's maybe on the borderline a little bit and you don't think he'll get snapped up by another team, then you could maybe put him on the practice squad. But again, that's all going to come down to special teams, and it'll be a give and take between different positions. We talked yesterday about maybe keeping five inside linebackers when we only had four last year. If they do that, then it becomes a little bit harder to keep six corners and vice versa. And then we wanted to wish a very happy birthday to one Tom Brady. Yeah. Which we figured this is a perfect time to talk about some of our quarterbacks. Um, also, I, I do want to say it is also Rojo's birthday, and I was like, man, that's not fair to have to share a birthday <laughs> with the GOAT just feels very unfair. So we want to make sure we give a plenty of a shout out to Rojo for his birthday as well. But yes, it is Tom Brady's birthday. Uh, but I think it seems like as a birthday gift, he's getting the event day off. That's right. Uh, it seems like this has been a strategy that, that coach has been deploying where when the next day is an off day, it's a good time to give you guys a, a yeah, that day off because then you sure. get a couple days back to back. So yeah. that's the situation. Tomorrow is their next so, off day. And he's 44 years young. 40. I don't really like four. hearing 44 referred to as old, but that's the <laughs> NFL for It you. is so true. The way that people refer to age in sports <laughs> versus normal life is uh, is very very different. But well, yes, let's talk about the quarterback. Let's let's talk about him. Let's talk about him turning 44. Let's talk about Tom Brady and uh, and everything that we have seen from him last year. Expectations for this year. And now it is the second year in the system. You get a full off season. What do we feel like Brady could could look like this next year? Well, the, just not in terms. Well, okay, we'll look at the numbers first. Last year, um, Coach said and Tom said they really felt like it didn't totally click him and the offense until the second half of the Kansas City game in Week 12, and the bye followed that. And there were eight games after the bye. Now look at these numbers for Tom in the first 12 games, which included the Kansas City game. They're good. I mean, a 95.1 is a good passer rating. You know, 28 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. That was certainly an improvement over what we had the year before. But look at him in the last eight. Wow. 112.4 passer rating. 22-4 touchdown to interception ratio. Those are obviously superstar numbers, and we already knew he was a superstar. But those are unbeatable. Those are Patrick Mahomes type number, right? Yeah, that's and incredible. So, um, if you if you conjecture that 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 they have it now, that they've clicked, and and they everybody knows the playbook. He knows the playbook. And from the start of the season, could you project those numbers in the second column? You know, maybe it's a little much to say 112.4 pass rating, but it's been done before, so it's not out of the question. Between the regular season and the postseason last year, he threw 50 touchdown passes Jeez. at the age of 43. Well, and now if you're talking about the reasons to believe that it would be as good or better, you theoretically have O.J. Howard That's coming right. back. You have a Giovanni Bernard. Now that a it's, full season of Antonio Brown. Yes, a full season with Antonio Brown, having him from day one and a whole off season with him. There's nothing that was lost right. that would in, indicate that any of those numbers would go down, and only other additions that are known typically as safety blankets. Right? That it's if you're talking about completions and your passer rating, you're having another incredible pass catching tight end, having a reliable pass catching third down running back. Those are things that are going to make your numbers yeah. even better. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, on paper there's there, there's nothing you see that makes you think it won't be. Which is as always good when it's scary. You're like, wait year. a minute, this just feels too good to be true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, do, I will say one thing. Generally, in, in the NFL, offense tends to be more consistent from year to year than defense. Teams that have a great defense one year sometimes have a little harder of a time maintaining that. Don't tell that to Monty Kiffin in the mm, that great right. Super Bowl era Buccaneers who would finish top five just about every year, but it's generally harder to keep your high rankings on defense. Offense tends to be more continuity, and then when you take a team like this with all the continuity in the world, there's obviously many reasons to be optimistic about that. Well, then, and let's also talk about Kyle Trask. I know this is a guy that a lot of our fans are very interested in with the Florida ties, and anytime you draft a quarterback, that's going to get everybody interested and fired up. So tell me a little bit about Kyle Trask and what we think we expect of him, the type of quarterback he is, the role that he could have moving forward in here. What are the things you know about him? Yeah, the, the being from Florida thing definitely helps him when there's a crowd. Yes. When the last time we were outside, um, he, there was a lot of Caltras, Caltras. Right. Yes. Any, anybody from the Gators that comes here is, is going to have an instant fan base. Yeah, already. I keep saying that I need to start yelling Blaine Gabbert's name a lot as a yeah. Mizzou alum. That you know, I just feel bad that he doesn't have the same. And I'll you be know, like Joe Jones. Yeah, 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 exactly. We just we just need to start repping our own alma mater a lot more go. to try to compete with the Florida people. I don't think we got a shot. I don't think we do either. I don't think you and I are loud enough yeah. by ourselves. <laughs> but you know, the thing with Caltras. Okay, so the storyline since um, OTAs has been. How's his development? Well, he's, we're taking it slow. We're taking it very deliberately. Coach would say, 
he's learning very deliberately. He's getting it all down, but we know there's no rush. So we're, you know, this is a deliberate process. That's fine, but when you talk, when Kyle Trask actually talks, he acknowledges that, but also says, hey, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm wanting to go slower. I'm trying to be complacent here. I can't be complacent. You know, I, so he can, he can look at the, he could do the, do the math and look at the numbers and see not a high chance he's getting to get on the field this year, but that's not going to influence apparently the way that he approaches this. Okay. And then how about Blaine Gabbert and Ryan Griffin? What do we think in terms of how many quarterbacks we're keeping? Do we put anybody on the practice squad? You know, we got four guys here that, and three, you know, two, those, those two middle guys have, have been here for a while now and, and Bruce Arians speaks very highly of them. So what do we think it's going to look like of Tom Brady aside, those other three guys and what your hopes are for the development in the future? So, you know, if you just watch practice, you can't, you obviously can't deny that Blaine Gabbert is ahead on the depth chart from Ryan Griffin because when they took the, I mean, he gets the second team when they're doing two minute drills, for instance, Tom Brady leaves the first one, Blaine always leads the second one. When they split the field in two for the first three days of camp, Blaine and Tom were on one side, uh, Ryan Griffin and Kyle were on the other side. But there's three preseason games to go. Mm -hmm. And if coach says in the preseason that, hey, don't count Ryan Griffin out, this is still a competition. Well, that's where the competition is going to have to be. And we've seen Ryan Griffin do very well in preseason games before. So don't count him out. But I mean, it's pretty clear from who's getting the reps, who's number two. So if you project from that, Tom Brady is your starter. Blaine Gabbert's probably your number two. And I don't think there's any chance that you cut a second round draft pick and try to put him on the practice squad. So Kyle Trask is your number three, probably, and not really earmarked to play this year, but potentially your quarterback of the future. And maybe you put Ryan Griffin on the practice squad coach kind of was, eh, I don't, I'm not sure about keeping four quarterbacks using the practice squad to do so the other day, but I still, we did last year. Right. I know it's not quite as drastic of a situation last year, but they could choose to do that again. And it's so tough because you put somebody on the practice squad, they can get stolen and a, and a quality quarterback is not someone that teams are going to ignore if they, if they feel that kind of confident way. And I, I know that's a big part of why they've kept so many on their roster in years past is they don't want to put somebody on the practice squad they feel good about and, and lose them. So that's always a scary thing. It's easy to just say, oh, just put somebody on the practice squad, but yeah. that, that doesn't always mean much. It happened towards the end of the year with Sam Rosen. I mean, mm -hmm. kept Sam Rosen almost the entire year on the practice squad, yeah. probably with the idea of maybe this guy could be a quarterback of the future. And then I, I think it was the 49ers at the end of the year came and took him. And that's, uh, so we brought in another quarterback after that, uh, Stanton, I think. Yes, right? yeah. Um, so. You know, the thing about Ryan Griffin and somebody grabbing him, yes, he's a quarterback that's been around a while, but he has hardly any regular season tape, so it's a little bit tough for teams to evaluate him. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, we have one more segment coming up that is going to be getting to your Facebook questions for us, so leave them in the comments section underneath our live video. And for now, we're going to meet one of those rookies that we talked about earlier in the show, Chris Wilcox. I feel like once I got the call, it was just like, it was a video going around, like, I think the NFL posted it, and my dad was going all crazy and all of that, but once I was laying down, like, that night, then it hit me, for real. Just like, I just let it all soak in, but no, yeah, that night for sure. Yeah, so I ended up getting a DM from Sean Murphy Bunting. He just let me know he was excited to get to work with me and uh, if I needed anything, just hit him up. From that message, I just knew like instantly that they were very welcoming. Uh, you know, I feel like they're really cool dudes in there and then they we're just ready to work. I've been watching film on them and they look like they're assignment sound and they know what they're doing out there. So I'm excited to get to work with them. I feel like the learning the plays and all that stuff is just a lot different than college for sure. Just the attention you get, from all the fans and stuff like that. I think I had like 10K new Instagram followers. It was pretty crazy. So little things like that is just the difference for sure. Definitely my family. Just no one in my family has ever like come this far as far as football. Like we really weren't even a big football family. So I'm the first one in the league for my family. And I just know it's a lot of people out there uh, looking up to me and I don't want to let none of them down. And as well as my future family, I want to be able to provide for them. So definitely why I'm still going. And knowing they brought back all the starters, I knew it was going to take some time for me to get my respect around here. There's a very good team, but I still want to find a way to get on the field. Even if it's special teams, whatever I got to do, I'm pretty sure it'll be special teams this year, and hopefully I'll work my way up into the corner spot. 
you can expect a dog for sure, a hard worker that's gonna give it 110% all the time. I just wanna go out there and just show y'all that I can compete with anybody, wh whoever it is in front of me, I'ma compete and I'ma always give y'all everything I got. Welcome back into training camp live. Casey Phillips here with senior writer and editor Scott Smith. And as always, we are here to take your Facebook questions in our final segment. And if you have not left those yet, this is your last chance. Put those in the comment section underneath our Facebook live video. Our first couple, of course, are about our tight ends, OJ Howard and Cam Braid. Everybody's dying to see how they're doing. Are they back yet? And uh, what is what is some of the status on them? Well, uh, yeah, we just made sure we OJ Howard Got a day off, but he's got a helmet. He's back in practice today. It was a planned thing. Um, hey, look, we got the head coach in our shot right now. Look at that. <laughs> Just the BA mobile chilling back um, here. OJ is doing fine. He said his Achilles feels great. He says they took enough of a um, deliberate approach and made sure everything was perfect before bringing him back so that when he got on the field, he wasn't worried about it. You know, I know, I think you've come back from like an ACL or something like that before, mm -hmm. right? As, you're a little bit nervous mm -hmm. those first few times when you're back cutting and running hard yep. and so on. But he says he's not worried about it all. Everything's fine. He feels great. Um, and he, he, he likes the progression. And so everything's good for him physically. But they are obviously taking it a little bit slow. They'll be ramping him up. And Coach Arian said the other day he's looking forward to when he can play a full practice, which will probably be pretty soon. Cambray, we don't get a lot of information on him just yet. But Coach, when asked him about it, said a lot of these guys are kind of day-to-day -day if they're not practicing. So... Wasn't really a lot of specific on Cambrai, but no, he isn't in practice yet. Okay, and then uh, our next question was from Connie. She saw the uh, the special teams going on, and I think it looks like that's over now, but she had asked about uh, why the yellow hats. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah I figured we could explain so, that as people watch practice. Anytime you see uh, special teams, let's say it's kickoff coverage, right? Well, they're they're practicing one half of those two things. They're, they're practicing either cover team or the return team. And the other guys in the hats are basically the scout team. And because you're mixing white and red jerseys, you can't just go red against white. So it's you can't easily differentiate who's on which team. So the hats help you realize, okay, that's my enemy over there. That's my enemy, I love that, that's great. Uh, Alan asked, how is Tristan Wirfs looking in camp? You know, we've been getting some of these um, offensive line questions about how they look. And I hate to not give great information, but it's just a little hard to tell, mm -hmm. right? I mean. Until you can actually sack a quarterback, it's going to be a lot of judgment calls on whether, you know, did, did, did was that a sack, him? was yeah. it not, did he hold him up for long enough? I mean, there's no reason to think Tristan Wirfs is looking anything other than great. Yep. Yeah. Really, I the only thing that. we've heard is that Joe Tryon has given him and Donovan Smith everything they can ask for. Right, yes. But that's probably good news. That is great news. Uh, Bear asked, he said, the other day Scott mentioned that he looks up so many stats that he forgets a bunch. What sources does he use to look up and sort stats? There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Um, uh, we, we have access to a couple of stat services that, that the NFL provides. Um, you can find some of it on uh, Pro Football Reference is a site that I use, and they have a, actually now it's a subscription part of it called Stathead that you can do a lot of really interesting searches on. We have a new stat service this year, True Media, that uh, I haven't really dived into yet, but uh, there's obviously a lot there in the database. So there's a lot of different sources, but um, some of them that are provided by the league, some of them that we purchased the service, and some of them that anybody could find online. Uh, sometimes you have to combine a couple different sources to find what you need. And like the other day, I was trying to answer a question for a mailbag about how many pass interference penalties Mike Evans draws compared to other receivers. and. Um, I ended up finding that on Football Outsiders, which is another great site, but this part that I found it on, you have to have a subscription to. So it's not necessarily easy for me to tell you where to go if you don't have these subscriptions. But by the way, since I brought it up, over the last two years, Mike Evans has drawn 17 defensive pass interference penalties, by far the most in the league. Wow. For like 350 yards. So that's hidden yards that he's also given the team so true. above and beyond what he I wish that counted the, for your stats. A lot of people have said that before. Yeah, yeah. I wish that counted. That would that would be great because you. I mean, you you deserve that. You know that that is the idea that you could have gotten all those yards if not for that. So I do feel like that should that should count in some way. Uh, Alan had asked, how is the D line rotation looking? Well, it looking it's looking deep to me now. I'll take D, him by saying D line to mean what we've defined it as, and so we're not talking about the outside linebackers. Right. We're talking about Indomik and Sue and all those guys. Mm -hmm. And we were actually sitting in that end zone yesterday, right in front of the drill where those guys were doing their, their individual drill. And um, we were remarking, we have so many of these guys. We, the, the Bucks' depth 
at that position right now. And look, they got it. Good job. Look how many of them there, there are. There are so <laughs> many of those guys. I mean, just think about it. You're, you're starting in the base package in Dominican Sioux, Vita Vey, and Will Golston. You still have Nacho, who started most of last year. You have Khalil Davis, who I think they'd like to see more of this year. You have Steve McClendon, who they traded for. Um, Patrick O'Connor. I can't even think of them all. Kobe Smith, mm -hmm. Jeremiah Ledbetter. And just about all these guys have already played in the NFL, and I think just about all of them, they believe, are good enough to make this team. So it's going to be tough, and you can see them go deep in that spot. Yeah, that's going to be really interesting to see. Um, Vincent asked us, how many snaps do you think Tom Brady will get this preseason? Yeah, that's been asked one time, and, and Coach just said they hadn't made up the rotation yet, and then Tom said same thing, but also, you know me, I like to play as much as possible, but honestly, does he really need to play that much? especially when there's only three games. So, um, you know, they'll probably at some point give the starting offense a full half. And whether that's the second game, or it's usually the third game, but with no fourth game, do they make that the second game and then give the rookies the whole third game? I'm not sure yet. It's going to be totally different this year. But I would think at some point, him and the starting offense get a, a half. A okay. That, that's just a guess, though. I don't right. know that for sure. Right. Okay. And ZP asked, uh, do you think Jalen Darden will see a lot of action. So I think he's kind of asking how much is he going to be asked to do as a wide receiver yeah. potentially as well, compared to just a return yeah, man. Yeah, but first he needs to win that return job mm -hmm. to secure that roster spot, I'm pretty sure. Because if Jaden, if he doesn't win it and Jaden Mickens is your returner again, you, you might have to keep seven receivers just to keep Jalen Darden on the team. And that's that's a little tough to keep seven of those guys. So let's, I understand what you're asking me, but he probably needs to win that return job first. Then not only are you on the roster, but you have a helmet on game day. You're not one of the inactives. And even then, if you, so let's, all these receivers and pass catchers that we have, you don't really need to put Jalen Darden in a big role because you, you already got so many miles to feed. But he's there, so you can design some stuff for him. And that's what I would ex expect Bruce Aries and his crew to do. If Jalen Darden is the punt returner, then they also have a package of plays for him. So I think he would see some time, but I don't think you're going to see him on the field for like 10 snaps at a right. time. Right. And I also just remembered from yesterday we had uh, had to stop because of the thunderstorms, <laughs> and we'd been mid-answer about O.J. Howard, and you'd said you'd finish it tomorrow, that it was something along the lines of is there a snap count type thing for him of because of injuries and trying to get him to last the whole year and then, you know, how prevalent he'd be in the office. Kind of a all-encompassing <laughs> the use of O.J. Howard this year, and you were kind of mid-answer before we had okay. to run out of the, the, the way because well, we of the lightning. we did talk about him already a little bit earlier in the show, but um, I did look up yesterday where I was writing about O.J., and um, I, I think we've used this stat before that since he came in the league, he's got the best um, yards per catch of any tight end just ahead of Rob Gronkowski. But I looked up all the, you know, his first season, he played in the first 14 games and then got hurt. Had about 26 catches for like 400 yards, six touchdowns. And um, that might have looked underwhelming for a first-round tight end, but I looked up the last 30 first-round tight ends, and that's what all of them do. Nobody puts up huge numbers. As a rookie, almost nobody. Like, <clears throat> Jeremy Shockey is basically the only exception. So um, there were promising things in those numbers, though. Six touchdowns and the high 16.6 .6 yards per catch. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy for a full season. And that's his goal. He said, I want to play 17 plus games and be available for my team. And if he does that, the numbers will take care of themselves. Okay. And then we had a question from Todd. How is Mr. Irrelevant looking? Grant Stewart. Um, I guess it's a, I guess you would say that the best thing you heard about them is that coach has said on several occasions that both Grant Stewart and KJ Britt have done a really good job of retaining the playbook and not making mental errors. So that's the, that's a really good first step that those guys are hardly making any mental errors. That's true. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us on this edition of Training Camp Live. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. And thanks again to all of our amazing production staff who scrambled to get us live in here after the weather changed things. And we will be back again tomorrow is their off day. But then we'll be back the next day. So make sure you get all those Facebook questions in for us if we didn't get a chance to get to them today. In a couple days, we'll see you then.